Christmas greetings, ladies and gentlemen. The makers of Linnet, the pathway to a soft, smooth skin. Hope you've had a joyful holiday. Tonight we present for your entertainment Fred Allen and his associate members of the Linnet Bath Club Review. An announcement of unusual importance to every woman in the radio audience will be made later in this program. Be sure to listen for it. And now, on with the show. <laughs> Fred Allen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Tonight... Good evening, Mr. Allen. Oh, hello, Joe Miller. Any old Christmas jokes tonight? No, thanks. Happy New Year. Thank you, Joe. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take you to the Mammoth Department Store. If you have any presents you don't like, we'll gladly exchange them for you. But you'll have to hurry because we're only going to be open for the next half hour. While I'm dusting off my floor walkers, Lou Katzman and his delivery boys will bring you some atmosphere. Hello, Mammoth Department Store. You want to speak to Mr. Mammoth? No, there is no Mr. Mammoth. That's the name of the store. Mr. Allen is the owner. Just a minute. Yes, what is it you want? What department carries pepper? The grocery department. Tried there? They didn't, eh? What kind of pepper did you want? Writing pepper? Why didn't you say so? That's the stationery department. This store is going to the dog. I don't think the dogs will take it. It's awful. Imagine that operator bothering me with a call like that. Fire her. You can't discharge her. She hasn't been paid for four weeks. That's right. I've stolen her lunch a couple of times, too. <laughs> Hello? Fur department? Yes, a lady just bought a uh, fur coat. Huh? Who's a skunk? Oh, that's different. A skunk coat. I thought you were getting personal. Huh? Of course the coat is waterproof. Who ever heard of a skunk carrying an umbrella? Oh, gosh, there's always trouble in that fur department. Yes, a woman came in yesterday to look at seal. Hudson seal? No, she wanted Christmas seal. Well, you're the owner of the store, but I'd hate to be in your shoes. They're not bad. They could stand some new heels. But everything will be all right shortly. Are you going into bankruptcy? No, I'm hiring an efficiency man. He can worry about the business. Where are you going to get the money to pay him? That's the first thing he's got to worry about. The gentleman see you, Mr. Allen. Who is he? Here's his card. Mm-hmm. Mr. Pinchpenny. Yeah, he says he wants his card back after you look at it. Ah, that must be the efficiency man. Send him in. Yes, sir. Yes? The rug department? A man wants to buy a rug for cash? The salesman fainted? Where can you get some water? Never mind the salesman. Grab the customer. <laughs> 
Miss Swift, send someone to the rug department to hold that customer until the salesman comes, too. Yes, sir. Mr. Pinchpenny is here. Mm-hmm. Take a chair, Mr. Pinchpenny. No, thanks. A good efficiency man never sits down. Shorten for life of the trousers, you know. I see. But standing up is hard on the shoes, isn't it? I'm barefooted. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Mm, yes, I dye my feet black. Save shoe leather. Well, if anyone can save my store, you must be the man. I've done some great work, Mr. Allen. You remember the dollar store? Yes. The place was going to pieces until I stepped in. In your bare feet? Yes, of course. And is it still in business? Yes, but not as a dollar store. I built it up to a five and ten. From a dollar to a five and ten. Well, you ought to wreck my store in no time at all. How do you efficiency men work? We reduce the overhead immediately. How many people on your payroll? Two hundred. I'll fire 150. That saves you 75 percent right there. But if customers come in the store, there'll be no one to wait on. Them. I'll stop the advertising. Then nobody will know you're in business. Uh, you, you don't mind if I come in the store myself occasionally, do you? What's your salary? Ten thousand a year. Starting tomorrow, you get three thousand. That's efficiency. Wait a minute. What do you get? Ten thousand a year is my minimum. That's your minimum. Yes, sir, that's my minimum. Well, Mr. Pinchpenny, you're fired. That's my ultimatum. (laughs) From now on, I'm my own efficiency man. I'll fix business up myself. Cancel my tickets for the opera, Miss Swift, and turn on that radio. Charles Carlyle, the Limit Bath Club tenor, sings an appropriate melody for you, Ty. Contented. Contented with you, with me, I'm contented. There needn't be any sun or moon or sky or blue. You have me, and I have you. I'm contented I want no more For what more could I aspire I'm on a heaven born a door So contented Miss Swift? Yes, sir? I'm going to take a trip through the store and install some efficiency ideas. I'll be back shortly. Yes, sir. Right up. Go on up. Just a minute, boy. Yes, Mr. Allen. Ladies and all, ladies, ready to work. You best as I'm ready to know Let me off, please. Say, who are you pushing? I don't know. What's your name? <laughs> Go on up. Uh, Flo Walker, Mr. Jenkins. Yes, Mr. Allen. How is my efficiency plan working out? Fine. I've got the customers waiting on each other. Good. Did you hire a cashier with no arms? Yes, but I had to let him go. He was opening the cash register with his nose. Oh, you can't trust anyone these days. No, indeed. Uh, pardon me, is this your hand in my pocket? So it is. I'm getting absent-minded. I used to have a pair of trousers like those. Pardon me, I'd like to buy a collar for my husband. Yes, madam, a collar, one like I have on? No, I want to buy a clean one. Fourth floor. Thank you. Uh, I want to check up on the sales girls, too, Jenkins. I don't want a single customer to get away. Yes, sir. Excuse me, can I change my underwear here? You can, but there's an awful draft. <laughs> the uh, basement is warmer. Oh, thank you. I want to buy a high chair. For yourself? No, you simpleton. I want to buy a high chair for a baby with a cane seat. We have chairs for babies with rubber backs. I've never seen a child with a cane. What floor? Six. Here's the complete department. What's wrong? I bought a box of pins here marked a thousand for a nickel. Yes? And when I get home, I cut the pins, there were four short. Well, of all the cheap skates, why, for two pins, I'd give you your nickel back. I don't want your two pins. I want four pins out of my money back. All right, here's your nickel. Thank you. Here's your pins. But the doctor will be mad. Why? My wife just had an operation. The doctor was going to pin her up so we wouldn't have to pay for the sewing. You better take home some glue with you. <laughs> I will. Excuse me. Oh, hello, Portland. Are you running this department, Yes, sir? I'm trying to install some efficiency. You certainly need it. Yes? I just saw two men shoplifting in the piano department. Where was the store detective? 
He was holding the doors open so they could get the piano out. I hope they uh, leave an address. We can mail them a stool. Can you help me pick out some Christmas presents? I guess so. I have my list here. Say, that's a pretty ring you have on. A boy gave it to me on Thanksgiving. Gave it to you on Thanksgiving for Christmas? Yes, it's an emerald. That stone is white. An emerald is green. I know. He said this will turn green by Christmas. That's fine. Who's first on your list? Grandpa. I want to buy him some liver tonic. Dr. Groans is the best. Yes, that's very good. The man upstairs used that for 20 years. It cured him. That's fine. He died last week. Well, if he died cured, that's something. Yes, you can't blame the liver tonic. No? No. After the old man died, they had to beat his liver with a stick for three days to kill it. Well, that's that. Now, who's next? Grandma. I want to get her something for the kitchen. How about a mousetrap? No, they're too poor to have mice. They're lucky not to be bothered. Oh, they have mice, but they only use Grandma's pantry to sleep in. They eat out. A la carte, I suppose. How would your Grandma like a gorilla? No, she doesn't need a gorilla. She has Grandpa. I mean, uh, I mean an electric gorilla. Oh, am I dumb? You're telling me. <laughs> she wouldn't use a griller. Grandma never grills. What about a chafing dish? No, she never chafes either. Well, uh, what else do you have to buy? I want something for Cousin Ed, the college boy. What college does he go to? He's a Dartnell man. Dartnell? Yes, he was put out of darkness, so now he goes to Cornell. That makes him a Dartnell man. Of course. Say, so why don't you buy him a flat? You'll get a kick out of that, won't it? I guess so. You can always get a kick out of a flask unless it's empty. Who's next on your list? I want to get a toy for my sister's baby. Can he play with his toes? It's cheaper. I know, but the baby has a stiff neck now and can't reach his toes. I want to buy something. Last Christmas, it was awful. What happened? Well, someone bought a train on the installment plan and gave it to the baby, and he lost it. How could he lose a train? The baby couldn't keep up the payment, so the man came and took it away. Then what's that last item on your list? Oh, that's to remind me to go home. I'm glad we've come to that. So am I. Goodbye. Goodbye. Say, Jenkins, what's that siren? It sounds like the burglar alarm. Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen. Yes, boy? Burglars opening your safe when you come to office? Yes, when they find the safe is empty, they might tell you it might take up a collection for me. Here is the announcement you have been waiting to hear. After you have enjoyed the delightful luxury of the sensational Linnet Beauty Bath, do not discard the Linnet Package, for the top of every Linnet Package now has a real value. If you will send it to us together with 10 cents to cover handling and postage, we will mail you an attractive perfume container. Modern women have found these dainty perfumettes to be an indispensable accessory for their purse or evening bag. The perfume bottle is neatly concealed in a beautifully molded vanity. And by the simplest operation of the top, your favorite perfume becomes immediately available. Avoid delay. Order yours tonight and be the first one in your set to have one or more of these smart perfume containers. Here's all you have to do. Send the top flap of a Linnet package together with 10 cents to cover handling and postage to the makers of Linnet. You will find the address printed on the Linnet package. This premium offer is confined to the United States only. The music of Anne Leaf at the World of the Organ and the music of Lou Katzman's orchestra here in the studio are now synchronized with the playing of the immortal Victor Herbert's Our Sweet Mystery of Life. <laughs>
live? Yes, sir. If anyone calls, I'll be in the honeymooners department. Yes, sir. Floor Walker, Mr. Plutz. Yes, Mr. Allen. How is the honeymooners department going? Very nice, sir. The cashier introduces strangers. I marry them, and the salesman sells them their furniture right off. Excellent. Would you like to wait on this couple? Yes. Now, I'll show you how to clinch a sale. Well, good morning. How do you do? What's on your mind? Well, Tara, he's going to get married next week. <laughs> You've got plenty on your mind, then. Uh, Eli proposed to me last night. <laughs> well, stop your snitching, Terry. Well, well, congratulations. Yes, the gas went out, and we were alone in the dark. <laughs> this is old now. Terry, don't do that. And uh, Eli popped the question, hey? Yes. He was too stingy to put a quarter in the meter. <laughs> and now, twerk that tall. I hate to see all that dark going to waste. <laughs> well, as soon as you're married, Eli, you'll see the light. Now, what can I show you? Well, we want to furnish a home. <laughs> yeah, now, what, what, what do you think we ought to get first? Do you want to buy on time, or do you expect to keep the furniture? Mm. Our collectors are handsome. Well, in that case, I guess we'll pay cash. Oh, is that so? You don't trust me. Practically accusing me of being unfaithful already. No, of course I trust you. Oh, spying on me all the time. Now, uh, could I interest you in one of our new closets? Made especially for traveling men's wives with a phonograph attachment inside. If your husband comes home unexpectedly, knocks on the door and says, who's there? The closet answers, nobody. (laughs) Nope, ain't gonna have no closets. We're moving into a new house, and we want it furnished from cellar to attic. A new house. Well, how about some cobwebs for your attic? Or a nice bar complete with union bartender and sawdust for the cellar. Well, you can use your own judgment. Yes, I'm paying for everything. Cash. Good, I'll furnish the house from top to bottom and throw in one of our mechanical front doors. Oh, Oh, what are they? Oh, a great invention. Now, if your wife is alone in the house and a brush salesman knocks, the front door barks like a dog. Scares peddlers away. Yes, sir, they're slicker than a trout. Throwing in one of them. Oh, never mind the house. Now, where can I get a trousseau? You mean Robinson Trousseau? <laughs> Try the book department. No, no, she oh, needs it. He, he knows what I mean. Something with lace. The only things we have with lace are Valentine. <laughs> Why, golly, you look funny to Valentine, Terry. Oh, is that so? Well, let me tell you something, Eli Whitney. I've taken just about enough from you. Now, don't you get up me high horse, there. Well, I'm running this shopping expedition. You're only marrying me for my money. Well, the only way I could get it. Now, wait, please, please. No fighting, folks. You're not even married yet. No, and we're not going to be married. You took the words right out my mouth. I'm through. Goodbye, yes. dark brothers. Good riddance to bad brothers. What about this furniture? you bought? Well, I can't take it if I'm not going to be married. Oh, what about me? I'm losing a sale. Well, I'm losing a husband. No, you're not. Business is business. You're going to marry me. Oh, oh, this is, this is so sudden. Oh, I hope I'm not making a mistake. Our store guarantees satisfaction, madam, or your money will be refunded. Well, well, all right then. Bring yourself up to COD. Now, here's my address. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Allen. That's salesmanship. Thank you, Jenkins. Here's another lady customer. Do you want to wait on her? No, if I make another sale, it'll be bigger. Man. Hello, Mammoth Department Store. Yes, I ordered the merchandise from you last week. You won't send the goods until I pay what I owe you? I can't wait that long. Cancel the order. Don't forget your pet meeting with the employees, Mr. Allen. Is the guest speaker here? Yes, he's ready. Right this way, Mr. Atwell. The employees are waiting. We'll go into the hall here. (laughs) Sit on the platform. I'll introduce you. Uh, Thank you, thank you. I want to thank you, uh, thank you, I want to thank you, fellow workers, for this vote of confidence. As you know, I've done my best to increase efficiency and better conditions in this store. Even this meeting, I've called in your dinner hour so that you could save the money you might otherwise squander on food. My outstanding achievements you witnessed today, I have brought Professor Roy Atwell, Master of Self-Confidence and Free Speech. Professor Atwell, the Apostle of Pep, who will speak to you... His subject is, they laughed, ha-ha, when I walked up to the platform. Professor Roy Pep Atwell. (laughs) Professor Atwell's asleep. Wake up, Professor. Hey, oh, 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 I was taking a uh, cat nap. Again introducing that wide-awake personality, Professor Atwell. Thank you, sister, uh, Mr. Chairman. Jadies and gentlemen, uh, lenties and uh, ladies and ladlemen, I, I didn't expe- expect to be stall- called upon or I wouldn't have gone to sleep, to sheep, to sleep. Mr. Allen has asked me to squeak, to sheep, to shriek to you tonight, to tomorrow, today, to, to slime the clatter, I mean to climb the bladder of success 
bung by gum, I mean ring by hung, rung, keep your toe, uh, your nose to the grindstone, uh, the grindstone. Don't be a watch watcher, uh, a clock watcher. Give your vest, I mean chest, no, no, your bust, uh, vest. And, and stitch, hitch your stagon to a war, your flagon to a bar, a star. What about personality? A put going, I mean a good joint, pint, point. Personality is very important. Salesman must cuss with the customer, I mean laugh with the cu customer. Show your tooth, your teeth, even if they're in your socket, uh, pocket, pocket. The man worthwhile is the man with the smell, a uh, smile, smile. <laughs> Whence all but gin has fled, a uh, him has fed food. Tell us about sales talk. Uh, sales talk, uh, sales go talk, yes. They are e essential evils. A good galesman, a salesman, must have a gift of grab, a gab. He must have both foot, uh, fleet, I mean feet, on the bound, the grind, the ground. And his subject, well in plant, a uh, hand. Business is no place for title off. I mean idle stalk, talk. I'm cocky pop. Uh, <laughs> poppy uh, The man with the bull should take the customer by the corn, uh, the, by the horn. And nine, nine times out of eight, I mean eleven, if the goo fits, I mean the shoe fits, uh, he will, he will wear it on the other feet. I mean toe. Oh, foot, foot. Doesn't that remind you of a funny story? Yes, but a poke in my mouth, I mean a joke in my mouth, mouth, is a no mapping letter, uh, laughing mutter. My, my first attempt at subject peeping, uh, squeaking was agonizing. The conference room was routed. When I stood in, I mean up, a jitter, I'm a fritter, ran through the glue, a room. A man named Using sled, he said, uh, he's putrid. Uh, they, they were laughing in me, uh, at me. But the, I gin, I mean, I grinned in, sli in, in chai. My verse, a voice, beer as a quail, uh, clear, clear as a bell. The, the, no, not the Liberty Lell. The one, one crack at a time, a time. I spoke, driving home, fact after fact. I let myself glow, I mean grow. Sore head, I mean sore in to a smashing finale that brought them to their knees, uh, feet, uh, knees. I finished. There was a moment of dense, sense, tense silence. Then it came. Not a deafening rave of applesauce, a way of uh, applause, but a strange noise. I mean noise. I'd never heard it before. It was like... Uh, that was it. And I knew, I knew I had made good as I've made good here today. You're Ryan, Professor. Yes, that always ha yappen happens when I speak. I I'll speak, speak out through the back door. That's hall, fine. You can't tell how this will turn out. Order, please. Employees will return to their departments. Order, please. Mr. Allen. Yes, boy. Who are these children running in the hall? Well, there's a riot in the toy department. The kids have chased Santa Claus into a closet. Just a minute, kiddies. Now, just a minute. Free ice cream will be served in the basement. That'll get rid of the little rascals. When are you serving the ice cream? Next July. The kids will find that out later. Now, where's that Santa Claus? Here he is in the closet. Come out of there, Kringle. What's the matter? I've just grown to pieces, Mr. Allen. I've lost my nerve. Fuck up, Sandy. Oh, I can't. I've been a Santa Claus for 20 years. I've been lying to kids for so long, I can't look a baby in the face. Oh, come on now. Take an aspirin and get back on the job. Oh, it's no good. Woe is me. I filled my last stocking. Don't say that. This is your life's work. You can't give up so easily. Oh, I'm so afraid. Nonsense. Here's a little boy now. Pull yourself together and give him the work. I'll try. But, oh, I know I can't make good. Leave it to me. Have you met uh, Santa Claus, little boy? Oh, who do you think you're kidding? My lad, what do you want in your stocking? Cram, bum, you're a fake. <laughs> I told you, Mr. Allen, merciful heavens, I've lost my cunning. Steady, Claus. Now, my little man, what makes you think that this gentleman in the red suit is an imposter? Well, his whiskers don't fit. Oh, me, I told you. You need glasses, little boy. Yeah, so do you. You can't see his suit's too big. You can't fool me. Oh, the little fellow has too much resistance. I know it. <laughs> I'm ruined. This is the end. Come back here. Where are you going, Sandy? Now, you see what you've done, boy? He jumped through the window. Now, what have you got to say? There ain't no Santa Claus. <laughs> Thank you.
love The night was made for love The day has I for me delicate sun But night time sighs for a strong hungry arm To lovingly hold you While truly fun fire Have ardently told you Oh, sweet desire, all I caressing this night without the love, the night was made for love, the night was made Do you remember the old saying, you never know what you've missed until you've tried it? This applies aptly to the marvelous Linnet Beauty Bath. A pleasant bath while you're experiencing it, and the most satisfying and beneficial results immediately after. Instantly, your skin becomes soft and smooth as velvet. This velvety feel comes from an extremely thin layer of Linnet left on the surface of the body after your bath, evenly distributed over the entire surface of the skin. Tonight, after your busy holiday activities, why not enjoy the soothing luxury of a limit bath? Notice what complete relaxation it affords your entire body. I notice, too, the refreshing difference in your skin. Linnet, spelled L-I-N-I-T, is sold by your grocery store, drug, or department store, and costs only 10 to 15 cents according to the size of the package. Before returning you to Fred Allen, may we again remind you of our attractive perfume container offer. Make a memo now to write for yours tonight. Send the top flap of a linnet package together with 10 cents to cover handling and postage. Or mail the 10 cents with the top flap from a package of Cream L, America's fastest selling dessert. You will find the address printed on both the linnet and Cream L packages. And here is Fred Allen. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you've all enjoyed a real present Christmas. And while it's a little early, I trust you will all have a happy and prosperous 1933. There's some consolation, though. No matter what other nations reject their war debts, America certainly got even with Turkey today. So don't forget, we'll all be looking for you next Sunday. So, so long. <laughs> Thomas Rogers saying goodnight for all the This is the Columbia Broadcasting.